Hi, this is Nat, and this is a challenge video lesson on how to use proportions and area equations to create infographics. Infographics are really interesting, kind of visually cool ways of displaying data, and one of the things you'll notice probably is that anything you could have used a bar graph to do, you can probably also use an infographic to do. The thing that I will say about this is you have to be really careful about what sort of data you select to create infographics. The one time making an infographic is really going to be uncool or just really pointless is if the data you have is really similar. Um, infographics are best at displaying data when there's big differences between the data. So before making an infographic and going through all that trouble, take the time to see whether your data has big differences between it. Because if it doesn't, then you might as well just make a bar graph. The key to making a good infographic is understanding proportional relationships. In this case, the proportional relationship we're going to be shooting for is the relationship between the data we're trying to represent and the area that different shapes might take up on a piece of paper. Let's invent some quick data. So these are some... Uh, data that I pulled off of a website. There are all the different Avenger salaries for the most recent Avenger movies. I found this and I thought it would be good because primarily of the big differences between them. We've got Captain America here at the top earning seven million. We've got Thor, five million, three million for Hulk, five million for Hawkeye. Then the Black Widow gets 20 million and Iron Man. This is the real winner for me in terms of making an infographic is making 70 million. So he's making more than all the others combined, which tells me this is going to be a pretty interesting looking infographic. So the goal is using a proportion. We want to assign an area in square inches or whatever, uh, units maybe, to represent each of these salaries. And we want those different areas for each thing to be proportional to one another. So we're going to set up a proportion. To do that, we actually have to randomly assign, or more likely thoughtfully assign, one of these uh, numbers a specific area to begin with. I'm going to start with the biggest one, because I'd like to fit the biggest one entirely onto a sheet of paper. And a regular sheet of paper is about 88 square inches. So if I think about Iron Man and his $70 million salary, I might say I want to shoot for the, about half of a piece of paper to be represented by Iron Man's salary. So I might randomly assign him 40 square inches. The rest is all going to be math. I have to make sure that my... Um, other Avengers here have an area of my infograph that is proportional to the amount of money they made for the movie. So here's how we set that up. Robert Downey Jr. or Iron Man made $70 million and took up 40 square inches of my graph. I turned that into a weird little fraction. And let's do Black Widow. Black Widow made $20 million. And the question is, how much of the area of the graph should she take up? So I'll use a variable to represent that. So I did $70 million on top, $20 million on top, 40 inches on bottom, unknown number of inches on bottom. I could have done this in reverse, inches on top and millions of dollars on bottom. It doesn't really matter so long as it's, this, it's the same. You have to put the same type of information in the same place. You'll notice this first fraction, 70 40th, $70 million, 40 inches, is all for Iron Man, and the second fraction is all for the Black Widow. Organization and the proportion is the most important thing. If you put things in the wrong place, you'll get the wrong answer. The final step is to say that these two things are equal to each other and use a process called cross-multiplication to solve this equation. When I cross-multiply, I'll multiply numbers that are across from each other in the proportion by each other. So A times 70 40 times 20, and I'll end up with 800 
for 40 times 20, and 70 times A is just 70A. And I'll go ahead and just keep that, sorry, 70A. And I'll just go ahead and keep that equal sign in the middle of the two. Now from here it should look like a regular equation that hopefully you're used to. 70A equals 800. 70 times A equals 800. So I solve by dividing both sides by 70. You need to know what that A is, so I have to get it by itself. And if I round, what I end up with there is that the area I'm looking for is roughly 11 and 4 tenths square inches. So, when I'm making my infograph, the Black Widow will take up 11.4 square inches of that infograph. Now I'll do the same thing again. I like to go back to my original for every single one. Uh, if you start kind of using the Black Widow to determine Hawkeye and then Hawkeye to determine the Hulk, you're, uh, you're factoring in all the rounding that you do. Rounding is error. So if we go back to our original, we'll make sure that we have as little error as possible. So Iron Man got $70 million, and he takes up 40 inches in my infograph, and now I'll go ahead and do Hawkeye. Hawkeye received $5 million, and we don't know how much area he'll take up yet. You notice I actually set this up in reverse this time. I did the opposite from before. Um, and it, that's fine because I've got area on top, area on top, millions of dollars on bottom, millions of dollars on bottom, and I've got Hawkeye and Iron Man. Now I'll go ahead and cross multiply again. Anytime I see a proportion, I can solve it by cross multiplying. A times 70, 40 times 5, ends up that 200 is 70 a. Again, I'll finish solving this equation by dividing by 70 to get my area. And Hawkeye has, is going to occupy an area of roughly 2.9 square inches. 2.9 square inches. I could go through this process all the way to the end, getting the rest of my Avengers, but I'm actually going to move on now. Um, hopefully we've got the idea. If I'm dealing with a piece of paper, now my goal is to get all those square inches to be the right amount of space on the paper. Um, if I did it in square inches in a way that it'll fit on a piece of paper, I don't have a lot of thinking left to do. Um, I can just figure out what sorts of boxes or even circles, if you want to be really fancy, um, will fill up that space. A standard sheet of paper might be 8.5 by 11, so if I decide that that's what I want to display my infograph on, I need to start thinking now in terms of area. How am I going to fit the square inches that I need into the area that I have? Um, that all really depends on what sort of shape I want to display my area as. It could really be anything. I could do a rectangle. A rectangle is probably the easiest. I could do a square. Still pretty easy, not quite as easy. There's some extra uh, equation stuff to do there. I could do a triangle, still pretty easy. Or, believe it or not, a circle is going to be the most difficult thing to do. For this lesson, we're really going to focus in on rectangles. Uh, rectangles, the equation for the area is length times width is the area. And if we think about that formula, we're just going to be substituting in the stuff we know or the stuff we want. Um, so let's go back to our data. Focusing entirely on area now, I know that I want Iron Man to be 40 square inches. So I know the area, so I'm going to substitute what I know into the formula. Area, I want to be 40 square inches. No. Because I know that the paper is 8.5 by 11, if I want to take up most of a side, I might say, well, I want one side to be 8 inches. So that could be the length or the width of my formula. In this case, let's say that's the length. So 8 is the length. The only thing remaining is the width. I can solve that equation really quickly. 
and say, all right, the width should be five. So I'm dealing with an eight by five rectangle. I can now go to my infograph and I can carefully measure out an eight by five rectangle. Let's say that's it. Now I'm ready to go back and do Black Widow's salary. She's gonna have 11.4 square inches. So when I punch this into my formula, area is going to be 11.4. Once again, I get to decide, because it's a rectangle, what one of these things is going to be. Maybe I'm going for some design where I think that now I want something that has like a, a length of 3 inches. Well, I can once again solve that equation. And my width is going to be 3.8. Moving back to my graph, I carefully measure out my 3 by 3.8 rectangle. Whatever that's going to look like, this is sort of an estimate, but you would be doing it more carefully. And there we go. That's our Black Widow rectangle. Completing my example, if I want to go do Hawkeye, I'm going to do the same thing. I have an area of 2.9. I figure out how I want that to look. Hard to say. Let's say I want it to be 1 by whatever. Again, I solve. This should be an easy one. Anything divided by 1 is itself. So I'm going to go 1 by 2.9. Going back to my infograph, I'm going to carefully figure out and measure what 1 by 2.9 looks like. And you start to see this infograph coming together. Um, I do this, obviously, for the entire Avengers cast if I wanted it to be complete. The other thing to remember is that half the infograph is the measurement and the math. The other half is sort of more artistic, and you really get to decide what it is it's going to look like. I can arrange these shapes in ways that are neat looking. I, sometimes you put shapes inside of other shapes. Um, sometimes you might get more data that kind of makes things even more interesting. So I might include the fact that Captain America, for his first Captain America movie, made less than a million dollars. Then you end up with some tiny little square off in the corner as a comparison. There's, there's tons of different things you can do once you start with the basics, um, but a lot of those are much more artistically oriented, so you kind of get to decide what that's going to look like. Going back to our area, we've got a lot of options for what our different shapes might look like. We can do rectangles, which are length times width. We can also do squares, which are just a side times itself, or a side squared. We can do a triangle, which is the base times height divided by two. We can also do circles, which are going to be pi, which is 3.14 more or less, radius squared. Uh, circles have the interesting quality of, because they're such a regular shape, you can include on an infograph a piece of a circle. So here's our paper again, a piece of a circle. The person looking at the infograph can actually infer a much larger size just based on a little piece. So again, if we use my example of Avengers salaries, I might represent Iron Man's salary as being this gigantic circle that takes up the whole uh, side and can't even see the edge. And then you'd probably end up with, you know, Black Widow, somebody else, somebody else. And what that looks like can really vary. but. Circles are kind of an interesting extension of this if you're really up for a challenge. So no practice problems for this video. If you're going to do an infograph, make sure that you've got a good data set that has lots of interesting varied data. A big range was, was, is really what you're looking for. Um, and then beyond that, it's just a matter of uh, coming up with some really interesting way to display it. All right, good luck.